Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Should you breed boas? What are some of the pros and cons of either breeding boas or just enjoying boa keeping without worrying about breeding? That's what we're going to discuss today. So I thought I'd start by showing you guys this Tarahumara boa. This is a 2018 holdback female. Looking really nice. Just love the pink colors and the circle back pattern. This uh, female isn't breeding this year, but hopefully she'll be ready to breed next year. But I do have some breedings uh, or some pairings of Tarahumara going on right now. So hopefully we'll have some more babies sometime this summer. Even if you're new to reptile keeping, you've probably noticed that there's this emphasis in keeping reptiles on breeding. So there is almost this expectation that a lot of people are going to be breeding. People will buy pairs of animals to prepare for breeding. You know, there's almost this idea that somehow people that breed reptiles have achieved a higher level of the hobby or something like that. A lot of this is just BS, you know, and I think it's a holdover from the era when most of the reptiles available as pets were taken from the wild. There was a limited supply in the wild and it was obviously uh, a detrimental impact on the wild populations. So it definitely made sense to encourage people to breed reptiles so there'd be lots of captive bred babies available you know, for other reptile keepers. And in general, of course, the, the captive bred animals do a lot better in captivity than the wild caught animals. So that certainly made sense a few decades ago. However, we've reached a point where there are plenty of reptiles to go around. If you go to Morph Market or Fauna or King Snake or any of the uh, sources for available boas, you'll find that there are plenty of boas uh, you know, that you can pick up. So there's really not this need for everybody to breed breeding boas. And I think this over-reliance on breeding and this overemphasis has really uh, caused some issues and some you know, problems with the whole boa uh, hobby as a whole. Um, not everybody should breed breeding boas. You really want to carefully consider whether in your situation it makes sense. So for today's video I'm just going to give you some of the pros and some of the cons of breeding boas and hopefully if you're thinking about breeding boas this will give you some food for thought to decide whether you want to pursue this endeavor. So first the pros of breeding boas. And so the first pro is that there's this amazing feeling that you get when you see a litter of baby boas. There's just nothing else like it. You know, there's really no way I can actually describe it. It's just something you would have to experience yourself. But it's just such a huge thrill to see these baby boas born after all you've done to raise the, animal, the uh, breeding stock up and breed them and, you know, take care of them and do all the things that you need to do to get the boa. So it's just this great, amazing feeling. Um, there's really nothing like your first litter of baby boas. You know, honestly, uh, the first one is probably the best. I mean, it's, I always like any litter of boas I get, but you know, the first litter of boas that I had, you know, actually specifically the first litter of red tail boas, which was actually my third litter, was just this huge thrill. Um, you know, and there's just nothing else like it, seeing these little babies that have just been born and, uh, you know, it's the miracle of birth. The second pro is that you can learn a huge amount about the biology of boas by breeding them. You really have to understand at a deeper level, uh, you know, the husbandry and what it requires to have these animals breed. So you can really study them. You can become a student of the boa, really put a lot of emphasis on learning about them. And honestly, there's nothing, no better way to learn something than to do it. I mean, there's some great books about boas out there. You know, but all the books in the world, all the written knowledge in the world is really um, not worth nearly as much. It's just a year of experience working with boas, feeding them, cleaning up after them, you know, putting them to breeding trials, etc. You know, and I've learned a huge amount of information about boa husbandry and biology just from breeding them. And this is something that I wouldn't be able to get out of books. So you definitely learn a lot about boas by breeding them. Related to this is you can contribute a lot of very valuable knowledge to the field of herpeticulture, specifically regarding breeding boas. So it's almost like doing science in your own home, figuring out what works for you to breed the boas, making the information available to others via you know, forums and articles, things like that. So you can actually actively contribute to the success of future boa breeding 
by breeding yourself and figuring out what works the best and sharing the information with others. So the third pro about breeding boas is you can contribute to the conservation of these animals in captivity. And so a lot of people have this idea that you know somehow breeding boas is going to save boas in the wild. And I think that that's pretty, pretty uh, uh, much a stretch because it's very unlikely that any boas from captivity are gonna be put back in the wild. And if the uh, environment in the wild where the boas live has been destroyed, there's really no point putting them back. But you can contribute to the long-term survival of boas in captivity. And a lot of boas, specifically some of the locality boas, are pretty rare in captivity. There's not that many that exist. And so by breeding them, you know, even if you're just a small time breeder, even if you have, you know, a litter a year of a certain type of boa, that's a pretty significant amount of animals when you look at the entire captive population. You know, one example is the Kualki boa. So the Kualki boas live on this small island off the coast of Belize. And I've seen estimates that the wild population might be as little as eight boas in the wild. And so I had a litter this year of 13 Kualki boas. You know, one of them unfortunately died the following day. There was something, you know, that was probably wrong with him. Uh, but the remaining dozen are going on to new homes to, you know, ensure the survival of these animals in captivity, as well as one or two are gonna stay here for my future breeding projects. So you're able to ensure the, that these animals are gonna survive in captivity. Um, you know, there are certain other types of projects that only one or two breeders have in the whole world. So it's really up to them to continue this success. You know, another example that comes to mind are the Honduran fire belly boas. Um, I'm not sure of anyone else that's breeding them at this point other than me. I hope there are people out there. I know that uh, quite a few people have got my babies, so hopefully they'll breed them. But the long-term survival of this project in captivity depends on future breeders that will continue to breed them. The next pro is somewhat related to what I just talked about. And by breeding boas, you can shape the future of the boa hobby. So if you breed a certain type of boa and you publicize it and you know, get the word out there what great animals these are to work with, you know, chances are you can get other people interested in the type of boas you're working with, and then you can ensure that it's going to continue being worked with in captivity. And, you know, with social media and with, you know, like YouTube, for example, there are a lot of uh, 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 venues to get this information out. You know, one, one of the purposes of my channel is I just want to show you guys some of the great boas I work with that aren't as well known. You know, and hopefully some of these will catch on more. Um, it's amazing how popular certain locality boas have become in the last few years. You know, one of them is the Tar Humara boa. Like I remember around five or 10 years ago, nobody really wanted these. You know, it seemed like there were a lot of them available for not that much money because there just wasn't a demand. People, I guess, thought that they were kind of dull looking and kind of dark, um, but they've just gotten super popular the last few years. I think people view them as a, a mini Argentine boa almost, because they're this small, kind of dark looking boa that has beautiful patterns like an Argentine. And Argentines are another one that's gotten really popular the last few years, so maybe these uh, Tar Humar are kind of riding the coattails of the Argentines. But for whatever reason, these animals have become super popular. Um, so by breeding an animal that you hope is gonna be more popular and publicizing it, you can shape the future of you know the reptile hobby and what people are going to be keeping okay so the next pro um i you almost hesitate to bring up but it's money yes you can make money breeding boas you know you're probably not going to strike it rich in fact it's very unlikely you're even going to be able to make a living breeding boas but you can make a little bit of money to put back into your breeding projects and maybe to start some new breeding projects not everybody is going to make money breeding boas and you know some people certainly are going to make more money than other people you know i think there are have been a few people in reptiles who have gotten into a project at the beginning and they've been able to really do well but that's really the exception the majority of people that are successful breeders they've been at it for quite a while at least five if not ten years 
you know, they've kind of gotten into their niche and they've kind of figured things out. So they're able to um, dependably produce boas every year. And they're able to make a decent amount that they can put back into their collection. They can use it to feed their animals, to buy new equipment, maybe to buy a new breeding stock. But they're certainly not going to be able to live on it. Very few people are doing this full time, myself included. Uh, for most people, it's just kind of a hobby that we take really seriously. And if we're lucky and we stick to it, ultimately we can make some money to put back into the hobby. And then the last pro that I'm going to bring up about breeding boas is you can meet a lot of really cool people. You know, so boa breeding and boa keeping is an interest that's shared by a lot of people. Um, a lot of people I've met online, to be honest. You know, I don't know a lot of people in my town that breed boas or work with boas. You know, so the majority of people that I've met have been through social media and through Facebook and online. I've met a lot of people making these YouTube videos. But it's great to connect with people that share your passion and interest in boas. Because let's face it, you know, not a lot of people in your everyday life are probably really into the boas like you are. You know, so by breeding them and by getting the information out there, you can make these connections with people and really enjoy the hobby and hopefully contribute to its uh, future success. Those were the pros of breeding boas. And I certainly think that it's worth breeding boas, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it, so those pros really resonate with me. But of course, like anything in life, there are also cons. You really have to consider these cons before you decide that you're going to breed boas. And so the first con that comes to mind, and one of the biggest, is the sacrifice. It really changes your life. You really have to give up other things you could be devoting your time and energy and money to if you want to breed boas. Breeding boas is not something you can just put on the shelf for a month and just forget about and come back to. Once you've decided to breed boas, you have to be fully committed and it's not something you can put up on hold. And one of the uh, re ways that this is uh, disadvantageous comes for things like taking vacations. So as you probably know, the peak of the boa birthing season is during the summer. And that's also the peak of the vacation season. And so if you have a family like I do, you know, your kids want to go on vacation over the summer. You know, you want to go to the beach or Disneyland or something like that. Uh, but it's really hard to just leave your boas for a week. In fact, it's often impossible if you have a lot of gravid females that might give birth anytime in July or August, it's really difficult to take a vacation. And even if you can manage to get a few days to leave the house, you're gonna be really worried about your boas because you put so much time and energy and money into them, uh, it can be kind of painful just to leave them behind. You know, so you really have to sacrifice a lot in your life if you're breeding boas. Um, you know, there are a lot of interests I used to enjoy doing on a regular basis, you know, playing music, taking photographs of the landscape, and you know, other things like that. And since I got deeply into boas, I really haven't had much time to do those just because most of my time is spent on my boas. You know, I don't know if this is gonna be like this, you know, forever. You know, maybe in a few years I might uh, step back a bit. But right now I'm just so fully committed to breeding the boas that I really don't have much time for anything else. So it's something that you have to accept if you're gonna get seriously into breeding boas. The second con of worth breeding boas is there's a pretty high startup cost. You're going to have to spend quite a bit of money acquiring nice breeding stock, acquiring the cages, thermostats, and other equipment that you're going to need to maintain them, and then feeding them and growing them up to breeding size. So you're not going to be able to take in any money, probably for at least around five years or so for your first litter, but there's going to be constant expenses that you're going to have to pay, whether or not you have any money coming in. So a lot of people get into boas as a hobby. They're not looking to make money, so it's really not that big of a deal. But if you're on a limited budget and you're expecting to get some kind of financial return from the boa breeding, it's gonna be a very long time, you know, if you ever even get that return at all. The next con is that there are no guarantees. Breeding boas is one of the more challenging specialties among herpeticulture. There's other types of reptiles that are a lot easier to breed in captivity and a lot faster. You know, things like some types of pythons and bearded dragons, leopard geckos, things like that. 
Boas in general take four to five years at a minimum to reach breeding size. So you're gonna to have to grow them up for a longer period than other types of reptiles. And it's also a lot less predictable whether or not you're gonna be successful. You know, boas aren't like a recipe breeding species. A lot of reptiles, you can just follow a recipe. You just do a certain type of procedure to get them ready and then put them together and odds are you're gonna get babies. With boas, it's not like that. You know, what works for one breeder may not work for you. Um, you know, some boas, you might do everything right and they just don't wanna breed. Other boas might breed under pretty much any circumstances. So sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. So in general, breeding boas is higher risk than other types of reptiles. And I think that's the reason why it's more of a specialty. You don't see as many large reptile uh, breeding facilities that work with boas. It's mostly small time hobbyists that just really like these animals that produce them. The next con about breeding boas is something I've been struggling with a lot and that if you put everything into boas and that becomes your specialty, chances are you don't really have any room for any other type of reptile. And for the first half of my life, I kept a variety of different reptiles, different types of snakes and lizards and tortoises. And there were always a lot of species I wanted to work with. But then about 20 years ago, I decided to just specifically work with boas and just put all of my energy into the boas and I don't have any other types of reptiles with the exception of a single python that I've had for almost 20 years now. There are so many types of reptiles that I have on my wish list as far as animals that I think would be really great to work with, um, but I don't really have the room for them or the time and space because everything is into the boas. And I know that it doesn't have to be this way. I certainly could have room, you know, make room for, you know, one or two pet examples of, you know, say indigo snakes or prehensile tailed skinks or uh, uh, red footed tortoises, just to name a few. And these are species I really would like to work with, but unfortunately, all that I have room for now is the boas. I'm just so focused on the boas, uh, I basically excluded any other type of reptile. And I see people that have these collections with a variety of different animals. And sometimes I'm jealous, you know, because there's so many cool animals out there. If I wasn't a breeder, maybe I could just keep a few boas, a few examples of different types of boas, but I could also have a lot of other types of reptiles in my collection, be more like a little zoo. Um, a lot of people with YouTube channels have been more successful. They have lots of different reptiles they can show. A lot of channels have done really well with that approach. Uh, by contrast, when you just focus on one thing, maybe you're an expert in that area, but you miss out on some of the other types of uh, reptiles that are really cool to work with. So that's a, a, you know, a trade-off that I've made, and you know, that's probably one of the most challenging cons that I deal with, with working specifically with boas. And so for now, I'm sticking with the boas. I'm happy with my choice, but who knows? Maybe someday I'll have room in my collection for a few other type of types of reptiles, just as pets. The next con when breeding boas is that breeding the boas and producing the babies isn't enough. You're gonna need other skills in order to find them homes and to complete the full circle of boa breeding. And a lot of people kind of neglect this. They figure, well, I'll just produce the boas and then you know, people will know the boas are there and they'll come and they'll want them and it'll be really easy to find them new homes. This is maybe the case for certain types of boas that are really rare and hard to get, but a lot of boas, there's lots of them out there already. So just because you produce the boas doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to sell them. You really need to do the networking and connect with people and assure people that their, your boas are worth their hard earned cash. And then you have to deal with the whole customer interaction. You know, and um, by and large, I've had really great experiences with the people that buy my boas. You know, met a lot of really great people, made a lot of friends. But there's always a few people that are sometimes a little bit of a nag. And, you know, I don't mean you. Most of you, you know, almost everybody has been really great. You know, so don't think I'm talking about you. But um, you really, you have to connect with the people. And I've seen a lot of breeders that get out of this, get out of breeding. Uh, you know, a lot of it is because they just can't deal with the whole customer service aspect. Having to interact with the people and ship the reptiles and answer all the questions and um, you know deal with sometimes when the, the transaction goes bad. So 
this is something people negl neglect. So you don't want to neglect the fact you're going to have to interact with people in order to find homes for your reptiles, which may not be something that you really look forward to. I think a lot of us got into keeping reptiles because our skills of dealing with humans maybe weren't all that great to begin with, and we'd rather deal with our legless friends. A related con with breeding boas is you're going to have to care for the babies, and sometimes it might be a period of time before you find new homes for your baby. So at the very least, you're gonna to pop to take care of them for a couple months, get them established and feeding and ready to go to their new homes. But in some cases, you may not be able to find people that are interested in them, and you might have to hold on to them for months, or in some cases, even years. So nobody should be entering a breeding project unless you can guarantee that the babies are gonna be well cared for, and that might mean that you have to care for them yourself for however long. Um, so this is something you really have to consider. Don't do undertake a breeding project unless you can care for the babies if you can't find homes for them. And you really should think about this before committing to a breeding project. And so the last con behind breeding boas is one that really keeps me up at night, and that's that there's really no guarantee that boa breeding and keeping boas can go on into the future. And there's a number of threats that face boa breeding. You know, one of the ones that came too close for comfort was this law that they almost passed that was part of a bill called the America Competes Act. You know, that act really had nothing to do with reptile keeping, but they kind of snuck in this language that would basically ban the interstate transport of any species that they added to the list. Luckily, that did not make it through the Congress and get voted into law. But the fact is that the lawmakers could easily pass a law that would effectively end reptile keeping as we know it. People that have reptiles as breeders would be kind of SOL and you would uh, really not have a viable market for your babies. And so basically the hobby would pretty much end as we know it, because no one is going to be breeding reptiles if they can't place the babies in new homes. There's really no point to that. Another risk that could end reptile keeping is the shipping options. And right now about the only uh, carrier that will ship reptiles is FedEx. And we're, you know, we're lucky that we have FedEx. We have services like Reptiles Express and Ship Your Reptiles that make it super easy to ship a reptile using FedEx. But FedEx does not have to carry reptiles. You know, they can, just like uh, certain other types of uh, carriers like UPS and the US Postal Service, they can just say, we don't wanna carry reptiles anymore. It's just not worth the risk for us. And um, you know, then we'd be SOL and we'd have no way to ship our reptiles. Um, there is, I should mention, there is uh, air freight. You can ship by Delta Airlines, but then you have to go to the airport and it costs a lot more money. Um, you know, that could go away as well. But the point is we're really limited as far as the shipping options for shipping our reptiles throughout the country. Uh, you might have a local market for your animals. You know, and living in California, there's a lot of people here that keep reptiles. I'm sure I could sell quite a few of them locally. But ultimately, I want to reach everybody in the country. I can ship my animals to all of the 48 uh, contiguous states and Alaska, the 49 states. You know, reptiles, of course, are banned in Hawaii, so I can't ship to Hawaii. Um, but if FedEx went away, I would really be in a bind because um, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to get my animals to the homes uh, that they want to go to. And really, it probably would not make sense for me to really continue breeding reptiles, at least not as I currently am. You know, so definitely a big con of breeding reptiles. There's no guarantee that we'll be able to do this long-term in the future. Okay, so that was some pros and cons to breeding reptiles. I hope that uh, if you've made it this far in the video, you really think about these pros and cons. If you're a beginning reptile keeper, uh, when you're gonna decide if you wanna breed reptiles or not. You know, breeding reptiles can be tremendously rewarding but you know there's a lot of sacrifices that come with it and it's definitely not for everybody so if you're going to go into breeding reptiles make sure that you thought about it and you're doing it for the right reasons so i hope you enjoyed the video as always shoot me any questions or comments you might have thanks for watching and enjoy your boss